human beings are this way we do not have the application of knowledge and knowledge is there first we don't understand this knowledge second we don't apply it hmm? see human beings are like this we really don't want to understand you know yesterday i struggled so much on my computer because i was trying desperately to see how do you cut this how do you splice this how do you do this after 1 to 2 hours finally i made something and it was a complete mess up because i don't understand how it is done <laughs> so i can try desperately to get into that but no it's not possible Uh, we are doing chapter five from the Bhagavad Gita, verse one. Arjuna said, "Krishna, you extol Sankhya Yoga, the yoga of knowledge, and then the yoga of action. Pray, tell me which of the two is decidedly conducive to my good." He is equally a confused man. So naturally, his ask is this: Krishna, you are first. saying that i have to do sankhya yoga okay and then you are saying now you have to do karma yoga can you not be a little bit you know easy on me and tell me which is better among the two so that i can do so what it means is this i am a confused person i really don't understand what you speak first you praise this one and then you praise that one Now let me tell you something about Krishna. Now Sri Krishna is always talking in a riddles. Okay, anything that is said, he talks in a very weird fashion. You got to hear it very clearly. So if you do not hear it clearly, and if you do not understand the meaning of it, then there is a problem. so it is always better to ask what does it mean because as a simple human being you really have no clue what is being said so you first got to have knowledge no before you put your step forward you got to have knowledge so let us try to understand simple knowledge for doing simple things now those who have eaten say a burger all right i think most of you all have eaten a burger okay now across the world they will put sauce they will put uh, the mayo they will put some cheese they will put some vegetables they will put one patty in a patty is that flat stuff where you make a patty and put it inside it's a filling of something and in between two breads that is one top and one bottom and you put it and you give it all right this is how a burger is made now if i am going to include in that something which is not at all from this world how is it going to work think about it see if i tell you between two breads put a little bit of sambar and a chutney and then have so guruji what are you talking about sambar and burger how does it go so idli and sambar is okay but not burger and sambar it sounds very funny but the way of looking at this knowledge what goes with what it is knowledge for you you are not going to mix up see when you have firmness of knowledge you don't mix up things in your life right now let us say there is something which is called chia seeds how many of you know chia seeds i am sure many of you know chia seeds because now most of the chinese stuff has got chia seeds in it and then in india we have something which is called kalonji a kalonji means onion seeds you know onion seeds and if you put both these together they are both look the same but their tastes are different everything is different they look the same 
Now, if you don't have the knowledge, you are going to put one in the other. It's like salt and sugar. Both are fine powders. And until you don't taste one, you will not be able to make out whether it is sugar or it is salt. Of course, if you know the taste of sugar, you will say, okay, this is sugar. But if you don't know, then what happens? See, the don't know part is called knowledge. I don't have the knowledge. That is why knowledge is important. So Krishna has given first the understanding of knowledge. And then he has given the way in which you got to use the knowledge. That is the path of karma yoga. So if you are making tea, you can't put salt in it. You have to put sugar in it. Right? So this is how. So make tea with sugar in it. So making it is karma yoga. Knowing that what you are supposed to do is called knowledge path. I hope I have made this clear. So now Arjuna is very confused guy. So he says, Krishna, I really don't understand what you are saying. You know, on one side you are saying, I am supposed to put sugar and then I am supposed to put salt. You have confused me too much. What am I supposed to do? Okay, just, just make it very clear for me. I am a very simple soul, you know. I don't understand all these uh, different, different ways that you speak. In the last 51 satsangs of mine, have you seen, I go right round the world and come back. Eh? If I have to give you an explanation, I will go right round the world. Uh, sometimes I go east and sometimes I go west. These are stories. So after listening to the story, you have lost the track. What was he talking about? Have you noticed this? You finally come to a point. What did he start saying? I really don't understand. See, just now, he was talking of Kalonji. He was talking of Sambar. And then he was talking of Sugar. And, and suddenly he is telling me that this is Karma Yoga. and this is, But what exactly happened? So, the way of explanation is for your mind to get a clarity. So, many examples are given for clarifying a certain point. So, stick to the point. Remember the point very well. Don't move from the point. Apply that knowledge to the point. Then you will understand better. Knowledge which is being given has what is called as application. Human beings refuse to apply the knowledge. <laughs> we have the knowledge, but we don't apply. We say, it's okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, in some places in the world, okay, now those who have eaten pizza in Italy, okay, Italy, or whatever you call it, and those who have eaten pizza in India, do you know how big a difference there is? <laughs> there is a huge difference. <laughs> because Indians don't put sauce in that. They put a dollop of sauce after the pizza is made. <laughs> but in Italy what they do is before making it, they'll, they'll smear it all with the red sauce. And they have that pure tomato, sun-dried, this, that and all. They will put that and uh, a lot of cheese. In our case, the cheese is, I don't know, you have to search for it. Where is the cheese? Okay. So, we are like this and they are like that. Our Indian Chinese food is also like that. You see, if you go to China, the food is, Chinese is different than Indian Chinese. A very funny thing happened last week. Okay. So, Rajma said, can you make uh, Shezwan? Shezwan fried rice or Shezwan noodles or something, Shezwan. Now, the word Shezwan is a very strange word. There is a particular kind of a pepper, which is called, pepper doesn't mean actually pepper, otherwise you will think pepper. No, pepper, which is called the Shezwan pepper. Now, we Indians in India think that we know too much. So what we do is <laughs> we take Kashmiri chilli. There is a chilli which is from Kashmir 
and then we put it in water and boil it and then we make one small paste of it and it becomes red 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 in color so bright red in color and all that then we'll put tomato sauce in it and then we'll put ginger garlic this that on top of it soya sauce I don't know from which angle it is called Shazwan. Okay. <laughs> but, but in India that is called Shazwan. Because it gives red color. See, the idea is it gives red color. So make Shazwan like that. Sorry, nobody has told you how to make Shazwan. Shazwan is a pepper, a small black seed. And in India, 99% or 99.9% .9 of the people don't even know what is Shazwan. If you do not make Shazwan with that particular spice, it is not called Shazwan. Okay? <laughs> so did you understand? Knowledge is missing. Why? Because we make Indian Chinese. This is the funny part. Alright, so confusion in knowledge itself. So Arjuna has asked this question, can you please make a clarification? So we will move to verse 2. Sri Bhagavan said, the yoga of knowledge and the yoga of action both lead to supreme bliss. Of the two, however, the yoga of action being easier to practice is superior to the yoga of knowledge. Now let us try to understand this sentence. Sri Krishna is trying to, you know, Sri Krishna is literally uh, when there is somebody in front of you who doesn't understand this from that and you are trying to explain to them, like you may try your level best, you know, to try to explain to me some of the dishes in America. I really don't understand. For me, like I'm just giving you an example, you know, there are so many different types of those uh, uh, what do you call that? Ravioli and um, I don't know, something, something. And God knows. Oh, no. For me, it is nothing but sevia. <laughs> you know, all the pasta, sasta and all that. I say, what is this pasta? I don't understand. So if you are trying to explain to me that curled up thing is like this, the one with the shell is like that and the one with that is like that. I'll just look at you and say, oh, you are talking about this, uh, you know, uh, in India we don't have that. Of course you get in all the big stores, all this stuff. But in India we have semia. You know, we make kheer out of it. Will an American make a kheer out of his pasta? You understand kheer? Sweet stuff. So, American is not going to make kheer out of pasta. But in India we make a <laughs> We use it for making kheer. So try desperately to explain to me, you know, you will have to break your head first. So now think about Arjuna and Krishna. Krishna is trying to break his head over Arjuna. He says, Arjuna, let me tell you something. He says, first and foremost, both these things, you know, this and that, both. Both knowledge and karma yoga are leading to the same thing. Okay. Don't bother your head about it. First, it is knowledge path and second one is called the path of work. That is work based. Okay. Duty. Both are going to lead you to the same place. Whether you like it or not. You go east or you go west. Both of you will meet somewhere. Where you are going to meet is a different story. Because the earth is round. No. End of the day you are going right and he is going left. But end of the day you will meet somewhere. End of the day doesn't mean maybe 365 days after that. Who knows? So, so, Krishna is making his point clear. But you know, out of these two, the easiest for a duffer like you to understand is the path of work only. You know, duty. Don't bother your head. First and foremost, you don't have brains. That is why I can't teach you knowledge. It's like you have to tell me, you don't have brains, you don't understand what are the different kinds of pastas that are there. <laughs> because you don't want to understand. See, human beings are like this. We really don't want to understand. You know, yesterday I struggled so much on my computer because I was trying desperately to see how do you cut this? How do you splice this? How do you do this? 
after one to two hours, finally I made something and it was a complete mess up. Because I don't understand how it is done. <laughs> so I can try desperately to get into that, but no, it's not possible. Human beings are this way. We do not have the application of knowledge. Knowledge is there. First, we don't understand this knowledge. Second, we don't apply it. Hmm? So now let us try to understand knowledge from a perspective which maybe try to understand this. Okay, Everybody has got Google Maps, right? Almost everybody has a Google Map. Uh, they will say, no, 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 I don't use Google Maps. But finally, end of the day, we all use Google Maps. Now, Google has got this very funny, uncanny ability. You put one place and you put another place. You want to go from point A to point B. Okay. It will give you at least three options. Go this way, go this way and go this way. And it will tell you this is the easiest way. It takes less time. Go the easiest way. So go this way. And human beings like us, you know, we fall for this Google's trap. We, <laughs> we try to, okay, this must be the easiest way. And finally, when you go on that path, you find that that way is so stupid, it is taking you from very narrow lanes. And sometimes the road is so narrow, your car also can't go inside. You see, this is the problem. And sometimes you come up to a dead end and you say, but where is that road which I was supposed to take? I think this is the lane. And then reroute. You understand rerouting? Google, <laughs> Google will say, now reroute. Now you come back and then you go to the left and then you go to the right and it is rerouting you back to the same place where you are. You know how difficult it is for even the knowledgeable person to understand this. But let us apply a simple law. Have you heard of the Pythagorean theorem? Huh? Pythagoras came up with the theorem. So apply that. See for yourself. Instead of going like this and like this, can you take the hypotenuse? Most of the people will say, Guruji, what is hypotenuse? See, we have forgotten hypotenuse in school only. The idea is this. Knowledge is there, but application has never happened. We have never applied the knowledge straight line knowledge. We always want to go like this, like this, like this. This is the problem in knowledge application. So Sri Krishna is saying, see, for people like you, just go blindly on Google, man. Come on. Huh? Do your work. Go drive your car. Don't break your head over it. And that is why we take Google's help in trying to go from one place to the other, thinking that this is the easiest way and we land up in some other mess. Hmm? I have done this n number of times in my life. Okay, I myself have not applied Google's law. And Rajma will be here as a proof to tell you how it is. Guruji, why are you always taking Google's help? <laughs> we land up in some very strange place and oh, there is no road from here. <laughs> what to do? Now we have come to the top of the hill and suddenly there is no road over there. One day I was in Uti. Okay. And Google is telling me, go up this road. That road was so steep. He is going like this up. And my car was groaning. It was not able to go up. And Chitti and all were there. Chitti and Aditya were there. I had to tell them, boss, can you do one thing? Go behind and put two stones in the back wheel. Otherwise, my car will slide straight down. Then we all sat over there cursing Google. There is no way over here. Finally, we had to drag the stones up little, little, little and come on top of the hill and then we had to go down the other side. So we should never follow Google this way. <laughs> so the path of knowledge is fraught with these problems. You can't understand most of it. 
So what we do is we just follow our nose, you know. Uh, okay, let us, this is the work we have to do. Let us do this work. This straight road must be going. It may take two hours to go. Doesn't matter. Two extra hours is fine. We'll have a cup of tea, cup of coffee somewhere, maybe an idli on the way. But go this way. This is what we have to understand. The path of knowledge is a tad difficult. The path of work, the work base, which is karma yoga, is a little easy for human beings. Because we don't want to apply our brains to most of the things. So let us just do it like that. So we go to the next verse now. So we are doing chapter 5, Bhagavad Gita, verse 3. The karma yogi who neither hates nor desires should ever be considered as an ev ever renunciate. For Arjuna, he who is free from the pair of opposite is easily liberated from bondage. So he is continuing on karma yoga now. Now we have left jnana yoga, knowledge behind somewhere. Why? Because easiest path is karma yoga. So let us go on the easy way first. So Krishna is going to talk about karma yoga first. Why? Because see, knowledge is little difficult. All people don't have that same chip, you know. Our memory bank and everything is over full. Every time we get a notification saying that, please renew, you know, please <laughs> take more space. <laughs> Nothing is there. And our memory and our brain fails. So, Jnana Yoga, little difficult. So, let us move on to Karma Yoga. We just have to do our work. So, he is telling, Krishna says, about Jnana Yogis who have reached destination we did last chapter. This time, we are taking Karma Yogis who are going to do their job and reach the destination. What is the destination, remember? Self-realization. Liberation. This is the destination. So in our case, Google going from uh, say Bangalore to Chennai. Like that. Okay. And New York to San Francisco. You are driving down. Just imagine how many ways are there. From one end of the world to the other end of the world. Hmm? So think like that. He is saying, don't bother. Okay. You just keep on driving south. Somewhere you will end up in Chennai. Huh? You know, now you take this south road. South is what? East you know, west you know. East is the place where the sun rises. West is the place where it sets. You know all this thing, isn't it? And then there is somewhere north and somewhere south. Just take south and keep on driving down there. Okay? Think like that. So you are a karma yogi. Don't bother about that knowledge base. Why? It doesn't work for you. You are going to get more confused. So just drive. If you see a board which says Chennai, 265 kilometers. Oh yes, you have found your way. Chalo, let us drive down that path. Okay, so this is how it is. So what he says to the Karma Yogi. The Karma Yogi who neither hates nor desires should be considered as an ever renunciate. Your job is to do the job. Don't keep on doing Katakali or Bharat Natyam on that knowledge of yours. Okay? Otherwise, you'll keep on thinking, Oh, why is it like that? Oh, why is it like that? All that kind of things. I am sure you understand what I am saying. Na? The more argumentation that you do on your knowledge is going to lead you nowhere. You know how we buy our vegetables, you know? Or we go to the bank and we try to put some deposits or... We go to some place and we think that we know too much. Oh, you know, I told you it was like this. Oh, this, these tomatoes don't look good. You know, nowadays tomatoes are 150 rupees kilo. We can go ahead, then we will buy better ones. Argumentation goes on and on and on and on and on. For some stupid reason, we love to argue with the person with us and with our own self. So the more knowledge you have, the more arguments you are going to do with your own self. Think about it. See, if you have knowledge, no? you are going to do more arguments. Yesterday, uh, there was some discussion was going on. So this lady says, I went to America and I did my post-graduation. I went to America for post-graduation. 
and Rajma was telling me about it and I said, uh, that is not the way. So, then what is the way? So I said, there is one of my Guru Bandhus are there. So I said, you know, she used to go to America and her son and her husband would always be out of the house, never in the house. So they will be always going out. One is doing some studies or one is doing some job or something like that. And those guys were never there. So this woman was just sitting in her in the house doing nothing. Finally, what she did, you know, she got so bored with it that she went to the neighboring library. There was some library. She joined the library and she started, you know, reading books over there. Then she went slightly further up. There was a university over there. So she said, uh, university is there, maybe I can do a course over there. My More than my age, okay. I can do one course over there. So she joined one course. She did that course. And then she said, I will do my post-graduation also. That also she did. You see, the whole point is she, this lady will go to India and come back, go to India, come back, go to India, come back. So what she was doing. And then there were some courses in that area, in the vicinity. So she said, I'll do some courses, you know, maybe, you know, somebody is teaching me something. So I'll do that. So she did that. The idea is, it is not that you have gone there for the course. You have gone there to stay with your son and husband. Unfortunate part is, you have nothing else to do, so you go and do some course. So <laughs> the way of looking at all this is, human beings have this very funny tendency. We always put it from the other perspective rather than from this one. So knowledge, don't bother just now. Work, you bother too much. If you are trying to bring the knowledge into the work, you know, you are going to be very confused. So do the work which is required. Don't bother so much about it. If you do the work like this, Without much botheration and without much ado, just do your work. Full stop. Got it? So those who just do their work and they don't have any hates, likes, desires, this, that. Oh, that's a work I got to do. I just got to do it. Period. Oh, I got a headache. I will do it tomorrow. Uh, this is very difficult. Maybe I should try something else. You see the Google thing. I should try something else. Maybe I should go through some other way. Maybe I should, uh, you know, first try something else different. What is all this? The yogi who is liberated, he doesn't even bother thinking about anything. He just does it without likes or dislikes what has come in front of him. Got it? Karma Yogi is a person who doesn't even bother too much about the likes and the dislikes. He just does it. Like that. So, this person is called a renunciate. He doesn't think too much about doing anything. He just does it. He is free from the F pair of opposites and easily liberated from the bondage. So if you want to be the perfect karma yogi, don't bother too much about the whys and the wherefores and the likes and the dislikes and how it can be done, how that can be done. Don't. You just have to do it. Many a times I tell people, can you do this job? Please do this job. But you know, how am I going to do this is not possible. I don't have this. I don't have that. Every person does this. But a pure karma yogi doesn't bother too much about it. He has to do, let us do. If it fails, okay. If you pass, okay. Do it. Don't do any brain this thing on it, you know. Like thinking too much. Why is it like this? The overthinking is the reason why you get into karmic debt. Just go ahead on that road. This is there, no? Just go. Got it? Where you are going to land? 
where God wants to take you, there you are going to land. <laughs> Understood? <laughs> the one who doesn't use too much of stress and strain and too much of, uh, you know, reasoning and all that kind of thing, that person is a karma yogi. He gets liberated just like this. This is a simple lesson. But please understand, I have given too many examples for you to understand. The easiest thing to do for any man is to do it easily. Don't think. Just do it. Alright? But tomorrow when you see a cup of tea and you don't know whether it is sugar or salt, what is the first thing that you see? Put it in that. Anyway, what's going to happen? You will have a salty tea. <laughs> you can chuck it, then make a sugar tea. Now you have understood, no? So make sugar tea. What difference does it make? In India, we have this word. In Mumbai, we use this word very often. Chalta hai. Rajma always tells me, don't use your Mumbai language. But let me use this language for you. <laughs> Chalta hai means everything goes. You understand? All is okay. Don't bother so much about it. Chalta hai. Alright? So, in Karma Yoga, this Karma Yogi is a chalta hai person. He doesn't bother. Everything is okay. All is well. Everything is okay. I'll do this also and I'll do that also. No stress, no strain, no thinking, no good, no bad, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just go. Alright? So, we will stop over here.